What a weekend of championship football we have coming up. Midweek was absolutely crazy and we're now heading into the penultimate weekend of the championship. I want to get your guys' thoughts on all of the action down below, but without any further ado, let's hop into the predictions. And starting out with Friday night's match and what a game this could be. QPR up against Sheffield United. Now, I certainly think that I'd rather be in Sheffield United shoes going into these final two matches in terms of the playoff picture, especially considering they play first. So they've got a real opportunity here to pile the pressure on the other teams who are playing over the weekend. But I don't think this will be a straightforward task. Sheffield United's away form has been patchy to say the best recently. They've actually not won any of their last six away matches. And I also think that this game gets especially more complicated given the recent news that it's looking like Mark Warburton won't be at QPR next season and though this could be his final game, his final home game in fact, um, at QPR. And you'd think that you know, there'd be a bit of an atmosphere around there. I certainly think that QPR would be sending him off with their best wishes considering the state of the club when Warburton came in. I know that the second half of the season hasn't been great for QPR, but I think they could cause some problems for Sheffield United in this game who still haven't exactly been firing on all cylinders, especially when it comes to scoring goals recently. Now, four points could be enough to get Sheffield United over the line. It would see them level with points on Middlesbrough and come the final game week if Sheffield United pick up four points and Middlesbrough win their last two matches. But what that means is that if you know Sheffield United drop points in this one, they'd need to go into the last day against Fulham needing a win, which is uh, not a situation you probably want to go ahead and find yourselves in. The goal difference between Sheffield United and Middlesbrough, incredibly tight at the moment, just two goals in it. But I think there could potentially be a slip in here for Sheffield United just because I'm not overly convinced by their away record. And QPR could put up a performance with Warburton seemingly ready to depart. I'm going to go for an interesting 1-1 draw in that game. FIFA's going 1-0 Sheffield United. Like I say, four points could be enough to get Sheffield United over the line, but they could run it very close. Next then to Oakwell for Barnsley up against Preston, and honestly, I've got absolutely no idea what to expect from this game. Preston were well below par on Monday night. Um, really disappointing defeat to Blackburn Rovers. Blackburn by far and away the better side in that game, and I think they caught us a bit cold in the first half, to be honest. I don't think we looked up for it particularly. Midfield was completely overran and I'd imagine that Ryan Lowe would tinker with the squad a little bit for this game against Barnsley ultimately with their relegation now confirmed maybe we'll get the chance to see a few of the youngsters thrown in I think I'd certainly like to see that um, heading into this game which is ultimately meaningless for both clubs here Barnsley of course were in action in midweek they lost against Blackpool I'm gonna go for a wacky sort of 2-2 crazy end of season game. It ultimately doesn't really matter. I think we could see both sides changing up the formation um, and personnel a little bit for this one. So I'll go 2-2. FIFA's going 1-1. Anything could happen in that game. Blackburn up against Bournemouth is an absolutely fascinating exactly game for both the playoffs and automatic pitch. Bournemouth obviously had that ridiculous 3-3 draw with Swansea in midweek. Could turn out to be a massive point for them, the fact that they came from three behind, but certainly two points dropped in that Bournemouth. game, especially going Next into Derek that crunch match for Forest against Bournemouth in midweek. For Blackburn, like I said before, by far and away the better side dimension. against North End, and maybe a return to form for Tony Mowbray's side and right at the um, crucial point of the season. Realistically, for Blackburn, only two wins from their remaining two matches will do in terms of if they do want to go ahead and sneak a playoff spot and that will be made you know, increasingly well, more difficult again. if it's Sheffield United well go ahead and win on the Friday night. So we'll know a little bit more about what the potential playoff push by the time 3 o'clock on Saturday rolls around. For Bournemouth, we saw a little bit more of what that squad was capable of in terms of the attacking personnel in the second half against Swansea, particularly Kiefer Moore, now he's back from his injury, adding a new dynamic to that forward line. This could be a slip here to Bournemouth, but it's a fascinating game because only a win will do for both sides. And I do have a bit of a gut feeling that maybe Bournemouth just about end up sneaking this one. If Blackburn played to the level they did against Preston on Monday, they're more than capable of causing this Bournemouth side problems who have shown real inconsistencies recently. But with that power off the bench, Solanke informed Kiefer Moore, a couple of the other options, 
I just think Bournemouth well, may end up sneaking it and it might be another late one. I'm going to go 2-1 Bournemouth. Thief is going for a 1-1 draw. I think Blackpool up against Derby has the potential to be a decent game of football, to be honest, with Blackpool looking like they're ending the season with a little bit of a flourish. You know, it was another win for them in midweek over Barnsley. And bizarrely so, their last three matches of the season for Blackpool have all landed against the three clubs who have been relegated from the Championship, which is some coincidence. For Derby, their away record hasn't been great all season, but you know, you'd imagine this would be a chance for them to just throw everything at Blackpool for this one. Um, you know, Derby taking the full allocation there to Blackpool as their sort of away day bow out to the Championship. But Blackpool have been in decent goal-scoring form recently. You know, I particularly think the confidence would have been flying high after how they dispatched with Birmingham. This one will be significantly closer, but it is probably Blackpool that I am leaning towards for this one. I'm going to go 2-1 Blackpool for this game with FIFA going 1-0 Blackpool. Bristol City up against Hull is another one of the dead rubbers that we've got going on this weekend, I suppose. But another game which I think has the potential to be a decent game of football. Both teams are coming off games where they've each scored three goals. So I'd like to think that we'll get a bit of a high scorer in this one as well, dare I say it. Bristol City's in four man at the moment, obviously being Andy Vyman, getting himself to that 20 goal mark recently and almost within double assists as well in terms of a double figure, currently on nine assists this season in the Championship, which is immensely impressive given he's been playing in this Bristol City side who have been so inconsistent throughout the season. For Hull, their main attacking threat obviously coming from Keen Lewis Potter, a brace for him last time out and generally, although um, recently the results, you know, maybe have gone off the side a little bit for Hull on the road. They have been a side that have de travelled decently this season. So I'm going to go for a five-goal thriller just in the favour of Bristol City. I'm going to go 3-2 Bristol City in this game with FIFA going for a 1-1 draw. We've got Birmingham travelling to Cardiff this weekend as well. Cardiff we saw in, a, in action in midweek, losing 2-0 against Middlesbrough. And that's been a little bit of a problem for Cardiff recently. Just their sharpness and real quality in the final third. I think that's now three games on the bounce where Cardiff have failed to score. I have liked the process generally under Steve Morrison, but that's going to be a little bit of an issue that they're going to need to tweak heading into next season. You'd think that if there's one team you want to play against at the moment and you want to get back into goal scoring form, then Birmingham are probably probably that side to be honest they've considered 12 goals across their last three matches however having said that the last time against Millwall was somewhat of a return to form for Birmingham. They were significantly better in that game than they had been, you know, against Blackpool and Coventry previously. So two pretty hit or miss sides here. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw and for them to cancel each other out with FIFA going 2-0 Cardiff. Now all the focus recently in terms of the top two race has really been focused on both Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest, but Huddersfield still mathematically not completely out of the picture. They would be relying on quite a few things this weekend going their way you know they'd need to win their final two matches and they're relying on both Forest and Bournemouth slipping up and probably a draw to play out between them in their head-to-head -head match but Huddersfield's still not out of the picture and quite an interesting game to go into here against Coventry obviously Huddersfield's place in the top six has already been confirmed but still a little bit on the line in terms of a little bit of jeopardy for a potential place in the top two however unlikely that may be. Coventry at the CBS though isn't an easy place to go to a lot of late goals scored at Coventry and I think we could be in for a decent encounter in this one as well. Last time was a bit of a shock 0-0 draw for Coventry with the goals they've had in their matches recently. Being their last home game of the season you'd think they'd want to put on a little bit of a, sh a, little bit of a show. I think that Huddersfield may go into this one leading sort of 2-1 going into the 90th minute and just to cap off Coventry's season there may be a sort of 98th minute equaliser or something like that it would just be typical Coventry wouldn't it so I'm going to go for a bit of a wacky 2-2 draw but that really could go either way Thief is going for a nil-nil Next up then to the Riverside for Middlesbrough up against Stoke. Now, despite Middlesbrough being as patchy as they have been recently, they're still well within the chance of a top six finish come the end of the season, particularly if Sheffield United drop points on the Friday. They've got a game they go into here against Stoke, which I don't think is a complete write-off. Stoke have actually looked quite decent recently and um, their games have been incredibly tight recently the last three matches for Stoke have all ended 1-0 two in their favour and one against them I don't see a massive amount being in this one obviously Middlesbrough's win in midweek was absolutely crucial in terms of keeping them up um, in that playoff picture they're two points off Sheffield United at the moment and currently just two goals behind them in terms of their goal difference and with how close these points tallies are there's every chance that come the end of the season it 
does go down to goal difference. So Wilder potentially needs to have one eye on that as well, but Middlesbrough in general haven't exactly been the most free scoring side recently. I do think they'll, they'll get the job done in this one, but just about. I'm going to go 1 0 Borough. Stoke could definitely throw a spanner in the works, though. Thief is going 2 0 Borough. Millwall up against Peterborough next up. Peterborough's relegation obviously now confirmed, but even in their last game against Forest, didn't exactly lie back in that game. Um, they certainly made Forest grind that one out, and I expect they'll probably do the same to Millwall in this one. Millwall in the same boat as Blackburn, three points off the top six with two to play, needing to win both their matches realistically to have a shot at the top six come the end of the season. And it has been their home form, which has probably been more reliable in this second half of the season. And, um, you know, quite a few draws on the road, but generally they've been pretty consistent at home. They've won three out of their last four matches at the Den. And I think they probably get the job done in this one, which would set up an incredibly interesting final day up against Bournemouth with, you know, potentially both teams still having absolutely everything to play for. But Millwall will be hoping for a Sheffield United slip up on Friday night. But I think they get the job done in this one regardless. I'm going to go 2-0 Millwall. Thief is going 1-0 Peterborough. And then we go to the big one of the weekend. Forest up against Swansea at the City Ground. Nottingham Forest have another opportunity to go ahead and absolutely pile on the pressure to Bournemouth. But not a straightforward game here for Swansea. There's a few sort of permutations coming into this one as well. The fact that, you know, Steve Cooper going up against his former club Swansea. While they have looked pretty lacklustre at the back recently, still on the longest unbeaten run in the league. And Forest will certainly have to manage this game as others have sort of struggled to against Swansea recently. You know, Bournemouth being a prime example of that, finding themselves 3-0 down. You'd think that with the way Cooper approaches these type of matches, though, Forrest will be keen to keep it a lot tighter um, than Bournemouth did and look to slowly sort of pick away at Swansea. And I'd probably back them to go ahead and do so in this one. Swansea have certainly got goals in them and they can score from the most unlikely of angles, particularly with Joel Perot on the form he's in um, at this point in time. But Forrest, I think will have gained a real belief and momentum from that Fulham game especially and it's now in their destiny you know it's in their hands for the first time this season and so I don't think this will be the one where they slip up I'm going to go 3-1 Forest in this game with FIFA going 2-0 Swansea Reading up against West Brom. I know that Reading weren't great last time out, but you'd think that they want to put on a little bit of a performance as their last home game of the season. Obviously, we've got Paul Lynch going up against Steve Bruce um, in the dugout for this match. West Brom, similarly, been pretty um, hit and miss under Bruce recently. Probably more miss than hit, actually. Uh, lost their last two matches on the road. Last time was that quite frustrating goal of straw against Coventry where they missed that penalty late on. And it's probably going to be the last time that a lot of, you know, the Reading home fans see a lot of these Reading players um, actually in the squad here. It does feel like there's a big refresh of this Reading squad coming up over the summer. So maybe the last hurrah for a few of these players in a Reading shit. And for that reason, I'm just going to edge them to pit West Brom in this one for no real logical um, understanding other than that really. And the last you know couple game weeks of the season are always a little bit wacky, aren't they? So I'm going to go 2-1 Reading in this game with FIFA going 2-0 Reading. And then to finish things off on Monday night, we've got Fulham going up against Luton at Craven Cottage. Fulham will be more than keen, I'm sure, to get this title wrapped up on Monday, but going to be a bit of a tricky match this one up against Luton, who themselves still need to go ahead and confirm their playoff spot, although more than likely that they will go ahead and do so. However, if Luton do lose this game and results go against them over the weekend, there is the potential that, you know, they still need to confirm things going into that final day. They've got a decent looking game, a home match up against Reading as their final fixture, but as we've seen countless times in the past, pressure can do weird things to teams, especially going into that final day, so I'm sure that Luton will be more than keen to pick up at least a point from this one, although with their squad looking ever more threadbare with the injuries they've accumulated recently, Fulham, I think, having a little bit of frustration with how some of their recent matches have gone, you know, particularly that game against Forest, where, you know, they were certainly piling the pressure on in that second half, trying to get anything over the line so that they could wrap up the title. It just didn't quite happen for them. For a prediction in this one, 
I think that Fulham will properly get the job done, um, if I'm being honest. I think that Luton, hit with some of their recent injuries, may um, just succumb to Fulham's pressure in the final third. So, score prediction, I'm going to go 3-1 Fulham in this one. Thief is going for a 1-1 draw. It's about time Fulham got back to winning ways. But there we have it, guys. Those are my predictions heading into the weekend. As always, I want to get your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think is going to happen? How are things going to unfold? And who's going to be sat in the playoffs come the end of the weekend? I want to get your guys' verdicts in the comments down below. If you did go to enjoy, though, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. And I'll see you all in the next one.